Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. Today, we will talk about how to prepare this section on Procreate. We will start with a plain drawing like this and show all the necessary tips on how to create this look. If you stick around until the end, we will also show how to prepare this quick animation for your drawings. Let's start by bringing the base drawing. I tap the import button and bring the PNG file. You can also import JPEG, PDF and PSD files into Procreate. We can see the imported file here on this layer, and the background layer is there by default. Let's rename this layer so we will not be confused later. The first thing I want to do here is to change the colors. So, I tap on the thumbnail and choose Alpha Lock. This will lock the layer on its original shape and limits. I prepared a monochromatic color palette for this drawing. I go to the colors menu. I pick the darkest shade here. Then I go to my drawing layer, tap the thumbnail and choose the fill layer option. This will recolor all my drawing at once. Now, I go to the background layer and select the lightest shade from the palette. This is a white color that has some gray tint to it. I like the contrast that the dark drawing gives with the light colored background. Now, I create a new layer to give a solid fill to the ground. I go to the selection menu and choose the freehand selection option. This allows me to trace the limits of the ground. I tap the thumbnail and choose the fill layer option. I have selected one of the very darkest shades, so I am dropping the opacity down a little here. Lastly, on recoloring process, I want to give a color fill inside of the building. But if I use the automatic selection tool to select, you can see here that it will potentially take too long. Instead, I apply the automatic selection tool to select the outside. Then, I invert the selection and can easily reach the result I want. This method is not perfect, especially since I am working with thin lines around the building. You can see some fills are bleeding outside the designated area. Therefore, I go around using the rectangle selection tool to clean all the unwanted small areas. Now, I have a neat color fill inside my building. I am trying to define the building and its surroundings a little better with each step of these color changes. One last thing I want to do is to create shadows as if these windows are passing the light inside the building. This will also create a sense of depth. I am duplicating the building fill layer which I just created. I alpha lock and fill this layer with gray color. This creates the base for shadow layer as I only need to clean up the right places. On this task, you can easily use the freehand selection tool and select triangle shapes like these and erase them. The only problem with this solution is that it is hard to keep up the same angle for all these triangles. To prevent this, I am creating a new layer to draw a triangle and start copying it to each floor. This means I will have the same angle on each floor. The ground floor was higher, so I complete the triangle until it hits the floor. Once I am done, I merge all these layers. I tap the thumbnail of the merged layer and choose Select. I go to my shadow layer and choose the clear option. This cleans up all the areas smoothly. To strengthen the shadow effect, I use a slight Gaussian blur. And I drop the opacity a little. I use clipping mask to attach the shadow layer to the building hatch layer. The colors and shadows define the building and its surroundings a lot better. This might be the right time to add some details. I create a new layer. I will be adding people and furniture inside the building to give ideas about the intended usage of these spaces. For this, I will be using our office and street collection brushes. You can use your brushes or draw your figures at this stage. If you want to use the same brushes we are using here, check out the links in the description box. I am adding all sorts of different people in different activities. Furniture defining different spaces and vegetation inside and outside. When I am finished, I take a moment to adjust certain places where the brushes may have not been fitted perfectly.
Once I look at the bigger picture, I decide to change the building hatch color to a lighter shade and drop the opacity of the shadow layer a little bit more. The building is always part of a context and the section drawing should demonstrate this well. That's why I want to give definition to the environment as much as possible. And now as a part of this plan, I will add a background to this composition. For this step, you can bring some of your site visit photos or street view captures into your drawing file. I decide to use this city silhouette brush we have in our street collection brush set. However, I want to close a capture from these buildings I apply the brush and try to adjust it. However, the more I scale it, the thicker the lines get. Since this background is far away, I actually want very thin lines. Therefore, I decide to use this only as a reference and trace the silhouette. I turn off some of the detail layers so I can work on this easier. And I toggle on the 2D drawing guide and start drawing using the monoline brush from Procreate. Finally, I add rhythmic horizontal and vertical lines to give the impression of windows. When I zoom out, I am happy with how this turns out. Now, I add colorful to each layer I worked on so far. The trees, the scenes inside the building and the background. For this, I usually use the automatic selection tool and then reverse the selection. However, when the lines are too thin, it is not possible to get a good result with that method. In that case, I go for the freehand selection tool. This is how I am filling the background silhouette here as well. If you are wondering why I am bothering to fill up each layer, it is because I want to add more details like patterns and textures. These nuances can help the drawing to be more expressive and distinct. I add a diagonal pattern on the ground, a striped pattern on the sky. I feel like these will create a hand draft kind of look. I am using our seamless sketchy pattern brush set here. I decide to fill the hair of my characters. This step is really optional. I had a feeling that this would make the characters more visible within the whole composition. Then I continue with making small changes on the colors and the opacity around the layers until I feel comfortable. As a final touch, I create a new layer and clip mask that into the ground layer. I start drawing with the soft brush to create a gradient effect on the ground. I smudge it with the same brush to give a softer transition. If you are not a fan of the gradient, you can pass this step. But when I drop the opacity, I like the effect. With that, I am finally finished with the whole composition, and it is time to add some annotations to this drawing. I am using our annotation brush set, which you can also download and use it for free on all your drawings. First, I add spot elevation to the finishes of each floor and their railings. Then I add text to identify each height. and I name all of the creeds accordingly. I add text to emphasize the spaces that I want to show in my design. You can also use different colors or icons to create different effects for this purpose. But in this drawing, I like the monochromatic classic look that I have created so far. Finally, I add a line scale. And you can use the drawing guides to set this upright for your drawing. With this last step of annotation, I am finished with this section drawing. This is the final look. We promised an animation at the beginning, so let's create that one as well. First, I go to the gallery and duplicate my drawing. I want to stay on the safe side, just in case I mess up anything. I open the duplicated document and check out the layers menu. I am renaming all the untitled layers one by one. 
What we want to do here is to animate the creation process of this drawing. Now imagine reversing this process. So if I turn off all these layers one by one, I can go back to the very basic look from the beginning. I start with exporting the final drawing as it is, and I use the JPEG version. Now I turn off the tags layer and take another export the same way. Next I am turning off the annotations layer and taking one more export. Then I continue the same process with the background and the trees layers. When it comes to the scenes inside the building, I have all of these drawn in one layer, but I don't want to turn off them all at once. Therefore, I am selecting a mixture of them to cut and separate them. This way I can turn them off step by step. This method will give me more of a process, but depending on your drawing, you can turn them off at once. Then, I turn of the shadows, the gradient and fill layer above the ground. And finally, I am left with this image. I took all the JPEGs from all these steps one by one. And now, I am going to import them one by one. I go to the gallery and import them my very first file. I create a white background for this image. Now I continue to import each one of these images from my gallery going back step by step. I rename each one of them as well. Once I import all the images, I go to the canvas menu and tap the animation assist. This brings me this timeline menu at the bottom of the page. You can see all my layers here. All of them are frames of this animation. If I press play, I can see that it is a little too fast. I tap the settings and drop the frames per second. I think six or seven frames per second looks okay. You can also check the loop, ping pong and one shot options up here. I like the loop effect the most but it is not possible to see the finished image easily and realize when it starts all over again. To change this, I tap on the final image frame at the end and increase the hold duration to 8, and I tap on the first image to increase the hold duration to 3. Now I am happy with the speed so that I can export this animation. I tap the wrench icon. Go to the share menu and choose share animated GIF. The appropriate gives you two options maximum resolution or web ready. If I want to share this on social media, I would go for web ready as it creates smaller file sizes, but this means I am giving up on resolution. If it is for a presentation and the resolution is important, I would definitely go for the maximum resolution. Once I decide, I hit the export button upper right corner and I am ready. Here you can see the short animation we just made. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let us know if you have any questions. We will continue our journey on Procreate Architecture. See you at the next tutorial.